Hi, welcome back to Central Point and to lesson three of our study on uh, living as God's kingdom woman, where we're using the book by uh, Dr. Tony Evans and his daughter, Crystal Evans Hurst, uh, Kingdom Woman. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, today. And our lesson for today is entitled A Woman of Value. Um, let's look at the word value. By definition, it means relative worth, excellence, uh, usefulness, or importance. A fair return in goods, services, or money for something exchanged. So let's take a moment and try to be honest with ourselves and, and ask yourself um, how you have valued yourself lately. Have you even thought about it? Or have you thought about the value that um, you bring to others around you? Our self-value is equivalent to our self-esteem, which uh, changes throughout the years. Uh, we have in our uh, early young years um, where young girls tend to have uh, low self-esteem. And that transitions over into their high school years where they begin to want to copy um, the hairstyles, uh, how one dresses, um, the desires or the social activities that their peers have. Um, these are very uh, impressionable uh, years because they are tending to see themselves um, by the associates that they surround themselves with. And many times um, we don't begin to try to determine our self-value or self-esteem until our college years. And even then, uh, many of us are still allowing other people to try to determine our value. And this is so true because just in conversation uh, with a parent, um, the other day speaking of their child and being a college age student and how it's so important to uh, encourage them as much as possible because of uh, their circle of friends. So still in 2021, uh, that's happening. And when I heard that, the first thing that came to my mind is, wow, that is uh, something that I have in my study um, for this lesson. So it's still true. Um, I mentioned the word value uh, when I opened up and how it is equivalent to self-esteem. So let's look at the term esteem for just a moment. And by definition, it means respect and admiration, the regard in which one is held especially. And some synonyms for esteem are to uh, revere, appreciate, and honor. In psychology, uh, the term self-esteem is used to describe a person's overall uh, sense of worth or personal value. So let me just try to make this a little bit clearer. Uh, it's simply how much you appreciate and like yourself. Self-esteem is also seen as a personality trait where it tends to be uh, stable and enduring. Now, let's look at uh, some scripture. Uh, the prophet Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 10, 23, and all scripture is coming from the New Living Translation. I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. And then we have Solomon who tells us in Proverbs 14 and 12, there's a path before each person that seems right, but ends in death. He writes in Proverbs 3 and 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. So, ladies, I, I think that by the declaration of uh, both of those wise men, that we're not even qualified to set and determine our own, um, our own self-value. And many of us don't come into the knowledge of, uh, self-value and esteem and worth until we reach um, adulthood and when we begin to uh, live as God's kingdom women embracing 
the mandates of the kingdom agenda. So let me take just a moment to uh, speak to the parents. That's why it is so vitally important um, to have uh, the kingdom agenda ruling in the hearts of our parents so that they may be able to deposit uh, that into their children's hearts at a very young age, uh, thereby planting a true seed of self-value and shaping their self-esteem by the word of God. Now, then we have um, Solomon who writes to us again. Uh, we can't get away from the word because that's what's uh, shaping our lives and teaching us our value. So in Proverbs 22 and 6, it reads, Direct your children unto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. Now, that is not suggesting that children are not going to be disobedient. But a better translation is that what you deposit into them won't leave them. And we can see this picture in the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15, 11 through 32, where he just temporarily lost his mind. And it was what his father had taught him that uh, never left him. And it's what brought him back to his father in a much more humble spirit. Now, we look at um, creations and think about value and worth. And we tend to uh, allow others to try to uh, attempt to determine that for us. And it's not our consumers who are our friends, uh, constituents, and family um, who can determine that. Now, the value of the creation is determined by the creator. So, ladies, let, let's say that uh, when we're going into stores and uh, we're thinking we're wheelers and deal makers when we're talking to uh, the salesperson or the manager sometime to try to give us a discounted price for an item. Well, you know that you're really still paying the true value of that item because it's already marked up as high as uh, probably 300% anyway. So with that being said, um, let's just talk about um, the maker and allow me to show uh, the receipt value. The receipt says in Genesis 1 26 that then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. So what value or self-esteem can be greater than that? Mm. And even to go a little further, uh, when you have uh, the fall and the sin uh, that separated us, our value had already increased uh, because we had sold our soul to Satan and we couldn't afford to pay the ransom for our rescue. So the receipt says, John 3.16, you know the infamous uh, scripture, and I'm just going to paraphrase here. Uh, God loved us so much that he paid the greatest price and that he gave his son as a purchase payment for us. This is the receipt of our value. And yes, it's true that many women would not know their true value until they are exposed to the kingdom agenda, which is the sovereign rule and will of God. Let's take just a moment and look at some examples of women who had value um, in the Bible and, and added value to those around them. We have Jochebed or Jochebed, depending on the translation, uh, Moses' mother. She intervened on his behalf in Exodus 2. And because of her watchful protection, Moses was later used as the deliverer of Israel in Exodus 3. Now we have Esther. If you remember in lesson one of the significance of the kingdom woman, I mentioned Esther and the positive uh, influence that she had uh, of the ones around her. 
And it mentions here about her bravery, how it gave opportunity uh, for the Jewish people to defend themselves uh, from what would have been an utter annihilation in Esther 7 and 8. Then you have Rahab. Rahab, the harlot, the lady of the night. But I tell you, God can use anyone who submits themselves to his sovereign will. Um, Rahab was instrumental in the victory of Israel over Jericho uh, in Joshua 2, where she housed the two spies that Joshua had sent over to uh, scout the land. Now let's look at value and virtue. And when we think about that, um, oftentimes we typically think of the Proverbs 31 woman. And who better of an example uh, than that? And before we get into um, breaking down uh, the Proverbs 31 woman, let's look at the word virtuous. Um, the strong reference number is 2428. And the phonetic uh, pronunciation is Kyil. Uh, by definition, it means strength, efficient, wealth, in reference to as an army. When we think about the Proverbs 31 woman and her strength, there's power, there's might, there's ability. When you think about uh, the Proverbs 31 woman being efficient, um, how effective she is, how she gets the job done, she's dependable. When you think of the term wealth in relation to the Proverbs 31 woman, there's the worth and the value and precious. Referenced as an army, uh, she's a fighter, a warrior, simply a force to be reckoned with. And what we know about um, the Proverbs 31 woman is that this is a mother uh, talking to her son about uh, the things that he should be looking for in a wife. So verse 10 reads, Who can find a virtuous and capable a wife? She is more precious than rubies. Verse 11, Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. Okay, ladies, what I got from that is that she governs her life in such a way that trust is born out of love for her husband. Verse 12, uh, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Uh, she doesn't come with drama, ladies. Uh, her behavior and her choices uh, bring him good. Verse 13, uh, she finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She's not lazy, has a desire to work. Verse 14, she is like a merchant's ship bringing her food from afar. She goes to great length to provide food and nourishment uh, for her family. Uh, the choicest of providers is what's mentioned in the book. Verse 15, she gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girls. Remember verse 15, she's organized and she has help. Verse 16, she goes to inspect a field and buys it. Uh, with her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She makes wise investments. Verse 17, she is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She's dedicated, she's diligent, she's not a weakling. Verse 18, she makes sure her dealings are profitable, her lamp burns into the night. She's not dealing just to be dealing. She's dealing to make sure she gains something in return that's going to be beneficial for her and for her household. And she makes great sacrifices. It doesn't matter how long it takes her uh, to achieve it. Verse 19, her hands are busy spinning thread and twisting, her fingers twisting fibers. She's busy working, not being idle. Verse 20, she extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She's a woman of benevolence. Verse 21, she has no fear of winter for her household, 
for everyone has warm clothes. She plans ahead. And when you do that, that tends to lessen your worries. Verse 22, she makes her own bedspreads. Uh, she dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. The Proverbs 31 woman is resourceful. She dresses with dignity. And if you know anything about the color purple, you know that it's royalty. Verse 23, her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with other civic leaders. So there's no doubt that she has something to do with his appearance. Uh, when you think about the civic leaders, they are well-dressed, um, usually well-versed, and having conversation um, about things with substance. Verse 24, she makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. Uh, she's creative and has her own business. Verse 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. Ladies, she's enjoying her blessings of today and trusting her tomorrow to God. Verse 26, when she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instruction with kindness. She's intelligent and she doesn't mind sharing her wisdom, and it's in a compassionate and soft-hearted way. She doesn't act as if she's a know-it-all. Verse 27, she carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. She's protective, uh, a great supervisor, an overseer, and she doesn't mind working. Verse 28, her children stand and bless her. Uh, her husband praises her. She has both honor and respect from her children and her husband. Verse 29, there are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Why do you think that? Verse 30 tells us, charm is deceptive. Beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Her beauty is within because of a heart that has surrendered to the will of God. Verse 31, reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds uh, publicly declare her praise. Her blessings and favor will come from within and without, from her household and her community. Again, I say it's the latter part of verse 30 that sets the Proverbs 31 woman apart from all the other virtuous and capable women in the world. And that uh, fear is not one in being afraid, but it is being in awe of the Lord. Uh, holding him in highest esteem, respecting him and honoring him. Um, his program is her program. His plan is her plan. His voice is the loudest in her ear, and she's seeking to please him. And why? Because of the heart that has surrendered to his sovereign will. Another thing about the Proverbs 31 woman that's uh, often overlooked uh, verse 15 regarding her servant girls. Um, she's not too proud to have help. And living as a kingdom woman does not mean uh, you live perfect. It just means that you've submitted yourself uh, to the sovereign rule of God over your entire life. And can you be this woman in today's world? Sure. Sure. Just let God's voice be the loudest in your ear and recognize the season that you're in. Um, you can have it all, but just maybe not at the same time and not without help. So never be ashamed to admit and ask for help uh, because the quickest way to burn out is when you're trying to do a million things um, all at the same time. Just let uh, God be the overriding influence in your life. Um, and when you do that, you will be 
on your way to being uh, a kingdom woman living out her destiny. Remember, your value is determined by the creator of the creation of which is you. Don't forget it. I thank you so much for joining us in Lesson 3. Um, I look forward to seeing you in Lesson 4. And also, uh, share this with others. And Brother Miles is also doing uh, a, the study of living as God's kingdom man. Share that with uh, the significant males um, that surround you, your, your father, your uncle, your brother, uh, nephew, and cousins alike so that they too can uh, know what God expects uh, of them as well. So again, I say thank you so much uh, for joining us. Again, I look forward to uh, seeing you in Lesson 4. Until then, stay safe and be blessed.